Cupid Wing is a Minecraft computer that I've spent the past couple of weeks building. Today, I'm going to be delving deep into how this thing functions and hopefully giving you a better understanding on how it works. I may make mistakes on this because, to be honest, I still don't fully understand how everything functions together as I've forgotten some details on the build that are crucial to understanding the whole build. Enough of that though, let's get into how this thing works. Let's start by giving an overview of all the components, where they are and what they do. Let's start with the quote-unquote wing of the machine. This is the part of the computer responsible for running the programs and was the hardest and most complex component for me to build. Then over here we have the RAM. The RAM stores any number the computer needs to be stored. Over here we have what's called the ALU or Arithmetic Logic Unit. This component is responsible for doing all the operations on the numbers such as adding. So that's a general outline of all the components. All these parts need to connect up and work together to function as a computer. How do they connect together though? Well, that's pretty much the bulk of what you see in the system, the information buses. If I remove all the information buses, the computer looks a little like this. Yeah, when I said they're the bulk of what you see, I wasn't overstating it. In doing this though, we can see every component on its own, so I'll give you another labeled diagram. Alright, so now I'm going to try and explain everything in each component. Once again, let's start off with the wing. Right here we have the program ROM. What this does is pretty much store the program you want to run in binary. Think of it like the code for the program. Directly to the left of this we have the program counter. This pretty much sends different lines of code to the machine. I'll make a video going over it in more depth later as it's my own design. Alright, now coming out of the ROM we have the instruction decoder and the 4-bit information bus. I'll explain how the code works in a later video because there's quite a bit to go over there, but pretty much the instruction decoder decides what to do with the other number you input. Over here you can see it inputting into a number of different things. This mess of wiring determines whether the instruction needs a number from the next line of code. This is only reserved for when the computer needs an 8-bit number, for example, knowing what number to save to RAM. This brings me on to the grey bus right here. This is the 8-bit information bus and I've tried to keep use of this to a minimum as it takes a lot of wiring to connect it anywhere. Because of this, it is only used for two instructions. Above and to the left of this are the main blue connecting lines. These connect straight to the RAM and are the main way of communicating to the rest of the computer. Before we go into the rest of the computer though, let's look at a couple more functions of the wing. Down below we have all the circuitry for the if statement. Basically, how this works is that if the loaded byte of RAM is equal to the second 8-bit number inputted, the computer will skip to the line of code stated in the light grey line. So pretty much, if this is equal to that, go to that. And this is all the circuitry for that. The pink bit consists of XNOR gates, which only activate if both inputs are on or both are off, making them perfect for telling if two numbers are equal. Over here we have a couple of registers. Registers basically stores a number temporarily. If it sounds similar to RAM, well, it is, because RAM is pretty much a whole heap of registers compacted down. Anyway, they simply store the numbers until the next line of code, where the 8-bit number comes through. The one on the right is for the if statement. If the numbers are equal, it connects up to the program counter decoder, which basically tells the program counter where to jump to. The other register goes straight into a decoder, and then another register. This register is a little different though. This is a self-resetting register and is usually good for only storing one signal at a time, which is exactly what we have here, as we don't want multiple lines running into the display at one time as they may overlap. And last but not least, we have this locking repeater right here. This in itself is a register and is used to allow or disallow the signal from the display into the input of the RAM. Whew. Now, the most complex part of the computer is out of the way, it's time to talk about the RAM. The RAM is a yellow blob in the center. Above it we have the main display bus and we'll go into that a little bit later. On both sides of the RAM we have four decoders. Now I could have cut that number in half with only two decoders but the other two connect up into the input panel and I didn't feel like wiring these lines all the way around so I added two more decoders. The top one is for saving to the RAM whereas the bottom is for loading from the RAM. When a byte of RAM is loaded, it goes straight into the bottom of the ALU. These pistons with slime blocks send the signal upwards to the main part of the ALU. On the left we have the adders and on the right we have both the AND gates and the XNOR gates. This black line going straight down the middle is coming from the primary register. The only reason we need a primary register is because obviously two numbers are needed to do operations such as adding. 
and only one byte of RAM can be loaded at a time, meaning we need somewhere to temporarily store a number, and that's where the primary register comes in. The last part of the ALU are the pink lines above, which is the main output bus for the ALU. These just go into some slime blocks powering the display bus. On the display bus, we have the display register. This basically means you don't have to constantly have the ALU output on display. After this, however, it goes straight into the display. Alright, so I think that's just about everything. The one thing I didn't really mention are these random green lines, which just tells the computer where the information needs to go. So, yeah. If there's anything you think I've missed, please be sure to let me know in the comments of this video. If you haven't seen my original video on the Bitwing, I'd highly recommend checking it out. I'm really quite proud of it. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, whatever. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.